Have you ever been lied to? For sure you have, we all have, we've all been lied to. And today our kids face a crazy society that lies to them. So let's look at the world's greatest object. Well, maybe this object lesson. Well, I, I lied, okay, but it's a good object lesson. So let's check it out. This is a hibiscus. It grows right outside my front door. And it's, you can see it's beautiful. Now, I'm going to make an object lesson out of this. This hibiscus lies. It's not what it appears to be. At least not what it appears to be to quite a few people. But what I would challenge you to do is pause the video and see if you can make an object lesson out of the hibiscus, whether it's on uh, promise keeping or breaking or lying, you know, breaking promises, whatever you can come up with. See if you can do it. And if you can, then leave it in the comment below. That would be a lot of fun if we had a little contest. So who can come up with the greatest object lesson? So how does a hibiscus kind of deceive you? Well, have you ever seen a tourist poster, a travel poster, where there's a woman with a hibiscus in her hair? And boy, it's Hawaii, it's uh, the South Seas or whatever. And this is the way life is on those islands and everything's uh, really tropical and, and, and cool. And, well, there's just one problem. Nobody wears hibiscus in their hair. And the reason for that is these flowers, when you pick them, they immediately die. They're not like regular cut roses or whatever in a, a vase of water. These things die before the sun goes down, <laughs> they shrivel up. And so the only time you'll see a local woman wearing a hibiscus in her hair is if she works in the tourist trade and has to put on a bit of a show. Now we have a papaya. How does this lie to you? Well, let me tell you a story. We started our church and like all local churches, we would throw these really nice potlucks and everybody would come and they'd bring a dish that they had, had made. Well, we had a new family that had just moved to the islands and they decided that they were going to make papayas for everybody. So they came up with a nice bowl. It was a beautiful presentation of papayas in there. The seeds had been removed and, and put into some kind of confection of some sort and put back in and it just looked gorgeous. Nobody would eat it. And the people were kind of like, what's wrong with us? You know, I mean, we want to fit in. Why aren't you eating our food? Well, it turns out the papayas taste great. In fact, the one that you're looking at right there, I just ate the other half. It's delicious. It's perfectly ripe. But the seeds are poisonous. You don't eat papaya seeds. It's not a good idea. The thing fools you. It's kind of a lie. And it's a great object lesson for a lie. And don't worry, I know you probably don't have hibiscus and uh, papayas handy, but I'm going to give you a solution, an object that you can use. But there's a third one here. And this one is obvious um, how this is a, a lying thing because you know that a kid will look at it and think it's gold, but it's fool's gold. It's iron pyrite. This was given to me by my grand uncle's wife, which I guess would make her my grand aunt. He had passed away, but he had been a miner in a gold mine. And this was an iron pyrite that he was able to take home and use as uh, a decoration on the shelf. And she gave it to me. But in those days, when I was young, my friends and I uh, really loved a series of books called The Hardy Boys. And The Hardy Boys were two kids that were always somehow involved in finding treasures or jewels or even doubloons. And so when I saw this rock, I thought it was gold, especially when she told me it came from a gold mine. I'm like, I got to have this. And she said, well, it's not really gold. It's, it's iron pyrite. It, it fools you. I want to tell you about my youth pastor, Pastor Vaughn, back in the day. He would go into Mexico. He'd cross the border uh, every Thursday and every Saturday to go work at orphanages down in Baja, Mexico. And I have went with him probably a hundred times or more. And so did a lot of kids. We, we would go down there and we would um, clean up the, the orphanages and we would bring them food. We would stop at the Mercado on the way in and buy fruit and beans and whatnot. And these kids, first of all, they were all orphans, except for most of them had parents. And it was because the parents 
either could not uh, afford to sustain them or just did not want to. But the parents would tell them, we'll be back for you, which would be, I don't know, maybe it was a lie, maybe it was a truth. But the idea was that we'll be back for you when you're old enough to earn a living for us. But that's not the story of Pastor Vaughn. The story of Pastor Vaughn was he would take these maybe once a year, once every couple of years, he would do the huge pile of paperwork required to take a bunch of orphans from the orphanages and bring them across the border and take them to church camp for a week or even a day at Disneyland and whatnot. It was great. And there was this one time we went out to the desert and while the kids slept in the dark, he took a bunch of rocks and spray painted them gold and put them around the camp. And then in the morning, he said, hey, do you know where we're at? This is a place where people can find gold on, on, on the ground. And so all the orphans went out there and they came back and they're like, why? You know, and he said, oh, muy rico, you know. <laughs> and then we had to tell the kids, yeah, it's not really gold, you know. But uh, the, the, the world just just deceives kids and us. I think kids need to know that they're a target and they're a target for corporations, advertising, uh, social media, uh, whatever, teachers even nowadays, some of them. Um, kids are, are targets for, for deception and for being taken advantage of. So we need to we need to teach them how to discern. And that'll be a different video than this one. This one is just bringing up the subject of there's only one place you're going to find truth. And that is in the Bible. You hold up your Bible and you talk about truth. Now, let me read you a couple of verses that you might want to use as you uh, present the Bible and that God does not lie. Um, Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not human that he should lie not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Then there's Titus chapter 1, verse 2. And Paul is writing and he's talking about a certain type of faith and a certain type of knowledge. And he says, it's a faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. So take that Bible and tell the kids, we read this Bible and we teach this Bible to you because it is the source of truth and we use it to measure anything the world tells us. If it works with the Bible, it's good. If it doesn't, it's not good. Now, I know that you would probably have a hard time coming up with maybe a hibiscus or papaya or a big chunk of <laughs> fool's gold. So what do you do? Well, here's one that you're probably familiar with. Maybe you've even done this yourself at some time in the past. You know how you show a nice shiny quarter or other coin to a, a one-year-old and you also offer them, offer them a kind of a wrinkly, dirty old $20 bill and Take your pick. You can have whichever one you pick. And of course, the kid's going, ooh, ooh, nice and shiny and heavy. And this is, this is great, you know, and takes that. And everybody laughs because we know what the real value is. Well, explain to your kids that the Bible is like that and the world is like that. The world offers you the nice, shiny baubles. But it's the Bible that has the real value in it, the value to live by. So here's a quick look at the lesson plan and activity page. It's free. You can download it at the link below. Now, a few minutes ago, just for fun, I said, hey, why don't you come up with your own object lessons with these objects and write them in the comments below. But I also mentioned that I would like to come up with a, a video, an object lesson that teaches kids how to discern. So if you have any ideas on that, Put them in the comments and we'll, we'll act upon them. Meanwhile, I'd like to say happy trails to you and we'll see you next time.